Hey, it's Ben here, and here in this video, we're going to have a look at how we draw on a square in Final Cut Pro. We're going to be using only the built in tools in Final Cut Pro and looking at a couple of different ways in which we can combine layers to draw on squares. So let's dive in and get started. We are going to come to a brand new timeline here. We've just got our background layer here, which I've done a little colorize effect on just to make sure that we can see our square a bit more clearly when we draw it on. So the first thing we're going to do is come up to the titles and generators at the top left and we'll scroll down and what we're looking for is the elements tab here. So if you don't see all that list, then you might need to open up the generators with the little arrow just to the left of it. So we'll come to elements here and we're looking for the shapes option here. So we'll click and hold and drag down to the timeline. And what you'll get here, first of all, is a white circle with a red outline. And we're gonna come up to the inspector at the top right to modify this so that it's a square. If you don't see the inspector up at the top right, just go to Window, Show in Workspace, and check Inspector, and that will bring up the inspector. We're in the Generator Inspector tab on the left-hand side here. And basically, we can turn off the fill, which means we're gonna end up with this red outline. We can change our shape to a square, and you can see we've got other shapes there as well. And for this particular example, I'm gonna leave the roundness at zero, and I'm also gonna just change the outline width so it's a little bit thicker, and we'll change the color to a lighter color. We'll go for just a kind of yellow off-white there. And then also we're gonna sharpen the corners here, so we'll have square corners for our square. So essentially, we're gonna use a transition to draw on this square, and then we'll have a look at a couple of options that we have to kind of make that a bit more interesting. So if we come across to our transitions on the right-hand side here, we're gonna scroll down all the way to wipes, and we're gonna use the clock wipe to draw this on. So if we select this and drag it onto our clip, then you can see right from the get-go, we get this square drawing on super quick, and we're gonna modify a couple of settings for this transition just to make it a nice kind of sharp edged draw on that we get. So I'm gonna delete the transition at the end there of that clip, and we'll just stretch this out. So initially our transition is just one second long. We're gonna stretch this out so that it's a little bit longer than that, so we get a nice slow, drawn of that square. Now at the moment we have some edge treatment on there which I want to modify just so we can see how we do that. So we have a feather on the edge of our square that's drawing on here. We're going to go up to our inspector again and we're going to change the border to zero. So basically we're going to get this nice kind of hard edged border. The other thing that we can change that's useful in the transition here, just going to come a few frames into where the square is starting to draw, is the angle here. And that basically decides where we're gonna draw our square on from. So if we wanna draw it on from the top, then we can start at 90 degrees, and that's gonna start it right up at the top. Or if we wanna draw it from the top left, we can find the corner there, we can set it to 136 degrees, or thereabouts. If you find you're not able to move this in as refined a way as you'd like, just hold down the Alt or Option key and drag this up and down, and you'll find it will move that little bit more slowly as you change that number. So we'll come back to the beginning here. You can see I've moved my line up to the top left. If we hit play, it's gonna play through nicely there. Now, as we're drawing on this square, we can start to do some interesting things, especially if we start to kind of combine layers with this as well. So if I drag a copy of this up and I select the layer above, and again, I'll just come a few frames in here. If we change the angle here, from 135 to the opposite of that, which will be somewhere around about here. So 315, we'll hold down the option key again, just to kind of get that fine tuning of that location of the start point. You can see now we get this nice little draw on where the lines chase each other around the square and draw on super nicely. So if we wanna kind of use and keep reusing this particular animation, then we may wanna make a compound clip of it. So I'm gonna come back up to my library here, top left. So I'm gonna select both these layers, holding down the command key, and I'm selecting the connected clip group there. Now, if we go to file and new compound clip, then we can create a new animated square compound clip. So I'm gonna call this animated square, and we'll click okay. And so now we can use and reuse this animated square on our timeline. So if I come down to my timeline here, I'll zoom out a little bit. You can see we've got our animated square, finishes there. If we 
kind of short on this a little bit, then we can bring this down again. So we can drag it down to the timeline. And what's interesting about this is that we have now two instances of the same compound clip on our timeline. Now what that means, and this is kind of an important concept with the compound clips, is that when I double click into one of these and I modify something like the, the color, so if I click here and we'll change this to a yellow, then the color of that animation will change throughout all the instances that that is on the timeline. So you can see both my animations here now, the first one here and the second one here, both change to yellow. So just to accentuate this a bit more, I'm going to reduce the size of this topmost animation. So we're going to kind of have a square within a square animating. And actually there's something we need to fix there to get this to layer up in the way that we want. So you can see now we're not really getting the, the layers appearing as we'd want to there. And the little trick for making this work is to actually set these up on a layer. So I'm just going to highlight this bottommost clip and hold Option Command and hit the up arrow. And that is going to put that second little animation on a connected layer there. So now I'm going to group that Command and G to make it into a connected clip and just drag up my transition there. Now for some reason with this slug or placeholder clip on the bottom, it allows the transparency to now work in that clip. So you can see we've got both those clips layered up. And if we change the color of one here, then we're changing the color of both of them. So we'll change this to kind of a light blue. And you can see if we come back here, both of these are changing. We're getting that same color change on both of those, which we won't always want. So there's a quick way of making a new instance of this compound clip on the timeline. And that is if we go to clip, and reference new parent clip, you can see we'll get this animated square copy here. So we've got animated square and animated square copy. Let's call this animated square blue. So now if we double click in here, we're going to change both of these bits of this square to a lighter blue. So I'm going to click here and we'll select this blue that we've got. Use that on both these squares. And because we've got these two instances of the compound clip now on the timeline, we're not changing the first square that we created. So now when I double click into this one, I can change this back to yellow. We'll get them both as the same yellow from my list of swatches here. And now you can see we can use and reuse these, but then we can actually kind of make them appear as different colors on the timeline by using multiple compound clips. So if you're making these graphic elements, one thing I'm often asked is, you know, how would we store these so we can reuse these and kind of work on them in different projects? And the way that I would suggest doing this is to go to File, New, and Library. We'll make a library called Graphic Elements. And then if we come to our other library, we can make a copy of these across to our new library. And it's going to copy the media and the original media. And that is then going to be in this graphic elements library. We could organize things in different events here, but it'll give you a library that you can kind of keep open while you're working on different projects. So I'm going to right click on my graphic elements library. I don't want that open at the moment. We'll close that up. But basically now we have these two animations working nicely in the timeline, different colors. We're able to kind of keep going with that. So we could duplicate this up again, go to clip, reference new parent clip. And then for this next one, let's make this a different color. Come back to our timeline. And then we have these three layers. We'll come to this third layer. And again, we'll just drop the size that down by another 20% or so to get those four different squares drawing on together. So nice animated graphics we can create here right inside Final Cut Pro without any external plugins needed. If you do have any questions about this, then do leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.